Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. And I've got my shirt buttoned all the way to the top. That means I'm really serious about this news. Uh, That's what that means. Uh, So, bringing to you something I wanted to story I was trying to get to for a couple days. This is only a couple days old, but the heat index in Galveston remained above 100 for 40 straight hours. It's part of another major heat wave, and this is from August 10th. It was just a couple days ago. Even in the dead of night, there's no respite. The Texas Gulf Coast City registered its warmest low temperature on record Thursday, and of course, it's the low temperatures that indicate a global warming trend as much as high temperatures, right? If it cannot cool down, um, people can't cool down and plants can't cool down and insects can't cool down and animals can't cool down, uh, then that makes it harder on everything. The story has been updated. The heat index hit 100 degrees at 6 a.m. Thursday in Galveston, Texas. 100 degrees at 6 a.m. And it didn't it didn't drop below that until 10 p.m. Friday night. It's part of a larger heat wave across the deep south and southern plains that shows no signs of letting up through at least next week. So that's where we are. Heat advisories stretched over a thousand miles from the U.S. Mexico border to Georgia, encompassing more than 30 million in a forecast for dangerous heat. Galveston failed to drop below 86 degrees Thursday marking its warmest all-time low temperature on record. Records there date back to 1874. Galveston also set a daily high, record high Thursday, hitting 96 degrees. Uh, The heat index rose as much as 117 and hasn't fallen below the upper 90s in days. So it's not, you know... Uh, I believe in that Tony Heller video, and I and maybe I, you'll probably hear other people try and bring this up. You know, it's not even over a hundred, but if there's more humidity, there's more water vapor in the air. Um, it makes it it just makes it a lot warmer, uh, makes the effect of the heat much higher. It's not just Galveston; much of the Lone Star Star State is baking, and the heat is set to expand this weekend. Houston peaked at 101 degrees Thursday. If you've ever been in Houston when it's 100 degrees, it is absolutely miserable. Um, Houston is one of the most humid places in the country. Uh, Miami probably being on the top of the list, or Miami and south of Miami. Uh, it's the first time the mercury has soared that high in 380 days. Houston averages three or four days, such days per year. I'm the same with Florida too. Like Florida, you know, never really gets above 100 degrees. It's always in the 80 high 80s and low 90s. But it, it is just so humid in Florida. Um, if anybody's ever been to Florida or lives in Florida, when it's you know 88 degrees and extremely high humidity, it's it's brutal. Um, Gulf of Mexico water temperatures are running between one and two degrees above average. That adds even more water vapor to the air. And this is key to a future story. Um, There's been high temperatures in Hawaii, um, probably due to, you know, warmer water all, all around. Top an environment that's already warming because of climate change, these oppressive heat waves are becoming and will continue to be increasingly common in the years ahead. Um, Hobby, Houston Airport, Hobby Airport, just south of downtown Houston, saw 22 days total with nighttime lows at or greater than 80 degrees. That averages to about one, one every two years. Uh, that was between 1950 and 1990, excuse me. You should get all the information in there. Since 1990, 29 years, the same airport has seen 130 days with nighttime lows. At or above 80 degrees, that's nine every two years. Uh, so, yes, Texas is hot. 
and getting hotter. Uh, moving on. This is a story that everybody has people up in arms. Trump administration weakens endangered species act amid global extinction crisis. Uh, and this is, you know, he talks about, you know, trade deals being terrible, the TPP or NAFTA, you know, those, those affect humans and gives, you know, those trade deals gave a lot of power to the corporations as far as what they do with production and human lives. <clears throat> It seems this act, this uh, this change to the Endangered Species Act will um, give corporations much more power to destroy the environment. Environmentalists see the rule as another handout to industry amid rising alarm that the ecosystems on which humans rely are collapsing. Uh, three months after leading scientists warned that humans have driven up to one million species around the globe to the brink of extinction, the Trump administration has finalized a sweeping overhaul of the Endangered Species Act, weakening one of America's most important laws for protecting imperiled plants and animals, which was probably already, you know, weak as it was. But something. The new rules unveiled on Monday change how federal agencies implement portions of the conservation law, making it easier to remove recovered species from the protected list and opening the door for more drilling and other development. Trump is the Bolsonaro of the North. It also scraps the blanket Section 4D rule, a provision that automatically extends the same protections to plants and animals listed as threatened as the act affords those listed as endangered and revises how agencies go about designating habitat as critical to species long-term survival. So all those environmental impact reports that go along with um, building pipelines or doing any kind of new building, you know, obviously it's going to be a lot easier. The changes first proposed in July 2018 allow federal agencies to consider economic factors when making decisions about granting species protections, which the law has previously explicitly prohibited federal agencies to consider economic factors. We must protect the economy <laughs> over the environment. It doesn't matter if having no environment means we have no economy. We must protect the economy. The administration has said the overhaul will modernize, quote unquote, and improve, quote unquote, the law, lifting regulatory burdens while continuing to protect species. Yeah. Environmentalists see as another handout to industry. The effort to gut protections for endangered and threatened species has the same two features of most Trump administration actions. It's a gift to industry and it's illegal. Um, we'll see the Trump administration in court about it, said Drew Caputo, vice president of litigation for lands, wildlife, and oceans at the nonprofit Earth Justice, said in a statement about the change. Absolutely, this should be blocked by the courts. And Trump should be out of office as quickly as possible. Because he's just wreaking havoc. Uh, so we know what's happening with uh, the extinction rate of plants and animals. It's off the charts. It's scary as hell. We are... You know, we've lost, I don't know, 80% of insects and 50% of a lot of mammals, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. Um, so they're, they're seeking to just open season on everything that's left. Whew, good God. Uh, moving on to the, what I wanted to cover about Hawaii. Honolulu, Hawaii has set more than a dozen record highs in the past month. Uh, Kim uh, Weaver brought this to my attention. He lives in Hawaii. He's said it's just been extremely hot and, and not just extremely hot, but consistently extremely hot for Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is another one of those places It's fairly humid regularly, but the, the temperatures stay, you know, really even and really, you know, if you've ever been to Hawaii, you know, it just 
there's not a lot of modulation in temperatures. It's, you know, gets to, you know, maybe high 60s or low 70s at night and maybe low 80s during the day. But it's humid, so it's, you know, feels pretty warm. If it goes above 80 degrees, it feels warm. Um, daily record highs have been tied or broken in Honolulu on of nine of the first 18 days in June. So this is back in June, including a tie of the monthly record of 92 degrees on June 10th. 92 degrees is hot for Hawaii. Temperature records in the city date back to 1890. Five additional re- daily record highs were tied or broken in the second half of May. So, let's see. Temperature records being broken. <laughs> Must mean something. The record high temperatures set in Honolulu this month have only been at about 2 to 5 degrees above the June average high of 87 degrees. But since Hawaii is in the open Pacific Ocean, highs even a few degrees of, above the daily average can clinch records. That's because the Pacific Ocean keeps temperatures from fluctuating very much in the lower elevations of Hawaii throughout the year. Warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the central Pacific Ocean are one factor in Hawaii's record-breaking temperatures since mid-May, according to the National Weather Service. As you can see, this in the darker orange shadings near the Hawaiian Islands in the map above, which shows sea surface temperatures compared to average on June 16th. An occasional disruption in trade winds is also to blame for the record streak. Hot. See that? Hot. Honolulu hasn't been the only city in the island, in the island chain to see record-breaking temperatures. Li, uh, Lihui, I don't know how to pronounce that, Kauai, uh, Kahului on Maui have also broken several high temperatures uh, records since mid-May. Kahului is tied to set the new daily record on 20 of 23 days from May 18th to June 9th. Jeez. Hawaii and Alaska. Second setting record. So, and lastly, in this video, I want to cover Arctic News. Uh, their last post, I believe, on August eighth, July. <clears throat> just talking about July being the hottest month on record. July two thousand nineteen, hottest month on record. July two thousand nineteen, temperature was on par with and possibly marginally higher than that of July two thousand sixteen, according to the WMO news release, pointing an image by the Copernicus Climate Change Program that is used as the background for above image. Uh, graph here. Check this out. I don't know if we can see this. No, that's not what I wanted to see. Anyways, you saw some hot temperatures there. Looks like we're at the top, top of here. Uh, previously, July 2016 was the hottest month on record with global land and ocean temperature of 16.67 C or 3.25 C above pre-industrial temperature. 3.25 C above pre-industrial temperature of 13.42 C. Surpassing the record set before that. 3.25 C above pre-industrial temperature. We're supposed to be limiting temperatures to what again? There's a spread of more than 3C between the coldest and hottest monthly temperatures in line with the seasonal cycle. Since the land-sea ratio is larger on the northern hemisphere, land heats up faster than oceans. July typically is the hottest month of the year, so the annual mean temperature for the year 2019 will be somewhat lower than the temperature for Ju- July 2019. An earlier analysis points at a potential mean temperature for 2019 of 15.2CC or 1.85 C above pre-industrial, but depending on the strength of El Nino over the remainder of the year, 2019 could even cross the 2 C guardrail that politicians at the Paris Agreement pledged would not be crossed. Um, the relative, so we're gonna he covers a little bit about the wet bulb temperature, temperatures in that area of 35.1 C at 81% relative humidity and pressure level of 104 uh, HPA translates into a wet bulb temperature of 32.11 C. Had the temperature remained at 35.1 C, but the relative humidity kept rising to 100, i.e. rainfall, the wet bulb temperature threshold of 35 C would be exceeded. Um, Etc. I'm not going to I'm going to link this below. You guys can check out the rest of this article. 
But more evidence that, you know, we're hot and getting hotter. And that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace. Thank you.